Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. With these words, Tony Broom Ministries greets you for another teaching session from the book of Psalms. The title is Magnify Our Incomparable Lord. This gives us an opportunity. As much as we like fireball preaching from God's Word, blazing the trail and laying out the message of eternal life, preaching against sin and warning of the judgment of God, it's good to be able to just sit and relax with you and just you and I together talk about God's Word and have a teaching session. And what greater opportunity to take two psalms from the Christian's pilgrim book of praise and worship. There is no God like the Lord God. Our golden text is Psalms 86 verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. What a great God we have. To present God like He is, and no one can really do that justice, but I think about how God gifted the psalmist David with the words to say. So many times we feel like our words are so inadequate. How can we praise Him? How can we worship Him like we really feel in our heart? It's better felt than telt, as the saying goes. You can feel it. But it's hard to express sometimes your feelings to the Lord. And He knows our heart, and we can say that, and we understand that, that He knows even when we cannot express. But it helps to express. We hear ourselves say words of praise and worship as we talk about God. And this one verse here, Thou, Lord, art good. God is a good God. He's ready to forgive. You don't have to twist his arm. You don't have to try to talk him into forgiving you. He is ready to forgive. He is plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him. God is a merciful God. Communicate with this incomparable God. The word incomparable is a word that you don't hear a lot but it really means there's none to compare. There is none like thee, O Lord, in heaven and in earth. Isaiah talks about that. And here in Psalm 86, we have this incomparable God. Magnify our incomparable Lord. Verse 1, Bow down thine ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. The psalmist many times unveils the problems and troubles of his life. He does not keep himself in this halo of praise and worship all the time to make us think that he just dwells in a cloud of glory all the time, never has any problems, never has things to come against him. In the Psalms, you'll find that in one verse, he is exalting God. In another verse, he may be down and having troubles. That's the way that life goes, and that's the way that real people live. I don't know what some of these super-duper saints, how they claim to live, but real people like you and I have troubles that we go through. And the psalmist is saying here, I am poor, I am needy, I need you, Lord. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. When he says, I am holy, he's not bragging about himself being holy this is what you need to do for me, God, because I'm holy. That's not the thought. The thought is, preserve my soul, for I am holy. In other words, we have a relationship, Lord. You have made me holy. You have brought me into this relationship with you. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. This is a daily relationship. When you pray, you don't just pray one time, and if nothing happens, you just give up. That's not what you do. You pray to God. You talk to God, and you cry unto Him daily. Rejoice 
the soul of thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Give me joy in my soul, Lord. Fill my cup. I'm like Andrew Ribb now. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up. Run it over with peace and joy and love. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Once you have experienced the mercy, grace, and forgiveness of God, there's nothing like it. And you want everybody to receive Christ as Savior and make Him their Lord. You want everybody to be saved. You want everybody to come into that umbrella of mercy and grace and be under the shadow of the Almighty to lift up and be saved and be blessed. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. So here the psalmist is again requesting God to bless him and now he's praying, Lord, hear my prayer. I am praising you. I'm worshiping you. And now I'm going to pray to you again. Hear my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. My friend, my Christian, brother and sister, and those who may not even know the Lord, let me ask you that question. When trouble comes, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, well, I'll just fly by the seat of my pants. What comes up comes out. What comes about, we'll see what happens. That's not the idea the psalmist had. He said, Lord, when I have trouble, I will call upon you and you will hear me. You will answer my prayers among the gods. There is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. When you consider the works of God, the things that he has done, the things that he has made, the things that he is involved in, there are no works like your works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. And we say, Lord, let that be. When will that happen? When are all the nations that God has made going to come before him and worship him and glorify his name? Well, they will when he comes to the earth again. When Jesus returns to this earth again to set up his kingdom to rule and reign on this world, the nations will bow. The nations, the people, will worship God. They will glorify Him. We can do that now as a born-again family of God. We can praise Him now. For Thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. There's nobody like our God. Learn from the merciful God. This is now start with verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Lord, make my heart where I will just run after the things of God. Instead of being obstinate, instead of being hard-hearted, instead of being stubborn, make my heart so that I will run after the things of God, so that I will praise you so that I will give you glory. Unite my heart to praise your name, to worship you, to give glory to you. Teach me. I don't know everything, Lord. In fact, there's a lot I don't know. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. What a Wonderful declaration to make. What are you going to do? Well, who knows? You can't never tell what's going to happen. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. The psalmist said, I will praise God. I'm just going to praise God for every reason and for no reason. I will just praise you. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I'm going to praise you with all my heart. I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. When God has done for you what he has done for me, what he has done for many of us, you will have a testimony on your heart and a praise on your lips. You will glorify God. Lord, you have saved me. You have delivered me from the lowest hell. You have lifted my feet up from that miry clay and set my feet on the solid rock 
You have lifted me up on my high places. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. Lord, they're not putting you first. They're after me. They're trying to get me. And you see again the psalmist here. He says in one breath, I will glorify your name. I will praise you with all my heart. I'll glorify your name forevermore. And then in the next verse, he says, there are violent men that are after me. People are trying to slip me, trying to trip me up. And I will praise you, Lord. I need you to help me. They have not set you before them. They're not putting the kingdom of God first. They're against God, so therefore they're against God's people. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Lord, no matter what people do, it doesn't change you. You're still the same. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Malachi 3, 6. And the psalmist says here, Lord, you're still the same. Situations may change. People around me may change. My circumstance is certainly going to change. But God, you're still the same. You're merciful. You're compassionate. You're full of long-suffering and grace. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thy handmaid. Show me a token, show me a sign for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because thou, Lord, hast hope in me, you've helped me and comforted me. Lord, I know that I am going to come out. I know that you're going to bring me through, and I will give praise unto God. God reigns supreme forever. This is Psalms 146, now verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. What about a big hallelujah to God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Don't wait till after you die. Pie, pie, and by and by in the sky when you die. I'm going to praise the Lord when I get to heaven. I'm going to sing when I get to heaven. I'm going to shout when I get to heaven. I'm going to, gonna, gonna, all this about when I get to heaven. What about now? He says, I will praise you while I live. I will sing praises unto God while I have any being. I don't want to wait until I'm unconscious. I want to praise God now. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. And then the psalm here describes what happens to a man, a person. I say a man, a man or a woman, boy or girl, a person when they die. That's why the psalmist says, do not put your trust in mankind. Do not put your trust. It doesn't mean don't trust anybody. It just means do not put your real stock in people. Do not put your trust, your everlasting trust, your salvation trust, your eternal life. You better not let your soul depend on mankind. Do not trust in princes, even in someone that has a high position. Do not put your trust in them. Here's what happens to him. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. You think about when a person dies, and I know that death is a morbid subject and it is a reverent thing that we should approach when people die. It's a thing that we should have in sacredness when someone faces the end of the journey. Certainly, we should make preparations spiritually, speaking and speaking of the spiritual when we come to the end of the way. The road will seem nothing when you come to the end of the way. The song says we need to make preparation to be sure that we have made things right with our maker before we come to that place. But when a person dies in that very day, his thoughts perish. You ever seen a dead man making preparations for the next day? You ever seen a dead man getting his truck ready to go to work? Have you ever noticed a dead man trying to plan for meals next week or financial preparations? A dead man doesn't do anything. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. 
You're not trusting in princes. You're not trusting in man. You're not trusting in the preacher. You're not trusting in a certain church. You're trusting in God alone. And this now continues to tell you about God. His hope, his help is in the Lord, his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is. You better trust in a God who can hear, a God who can save, a God who created everything. We're talking about no, no false God, not an idol God, not a God that someone came up with. We're talking about the Creator, the one who made heaven and earth, the sea and everything that therein is, which keepeth truth forever. He's a truthful God. He doesn't change. He doesn't have to change when the election comes around. He doesn't have to change according to what the executive order says. He's still the same. He's always truthful, which executeth judgment for the oppressed. God looks out for those who are oppressed, and He does what's right by them, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. And these things are attributed to what God does, His works, the thing that God does. He executes judgment for the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. He will let the prisoner go. The thing about the prisoner being released, you don't just let them out and let them off the hook. The thing is, God looses the prisoner. Well, how does God loose the prisoner? Does he come in the prison, take the chains off? He certainly can. But the loosing of the prisoner, when he saves you, when you're born again, the prisoner can be released. He's already released spiritually. He can be released physically. You might as well let him out. If he's really born again, he won't do wrong anymore. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this thing about Christianity that just puts a patch on top of your head and has a Jesus name on it, and you don't make any changes in your life, that's hogwash. It won't flush. It might flush. That's all it'll do is flush down the sewer because it's no good. When Jesus comes into your heart, there's a change. What a change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. That means physically and that means spiritually. And think about this. One of the biggest things that Jesus did, of course, saving souls, when he came to this earth, he healed. And many that were blind, he gave their sight. He said when the Disciples came from John the Baptist. They were wondering, and John had sent them to say, Are you really he that should come, or do we need to look for someone else? Jesus said, Go tell John what those things are you see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The blind receive their sight. That's the first thing that he said, you go tell John the blind are seeing. So this is the Old Testament. In Psalms 146, way back in the Old Testament, it said the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. This is a prophetic version, a prophetic scripture that was fulfilled. Every time Jesus healed a blind person, it was fulfilling Isaiah 61 and also Psalms 146. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. If you're bowed down, you're pushed down, you're oppressed, the Lord's able to raise you up. He's able to lift your burden. The Lord loveth the righteous. He loves everybody, but He has a special relationship with the righteous that just anybody doesn't have. You can have it. If you're a sinner, He loves you, but you don't experience that love. You don't enjoy the benefits of that love like you will when you come to the Lord, the Lord preserveth the strangers. If you're a stranger, you're a misfit, out of whack, He'll preserve you. He'll give you a relationship with Him. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. There's help for those who need help in the name of the Lord. But the way of the wicked, He turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. And again, a big hallelujah. 
ends Psalms 146. So, Psalms 86, Psalms 146. We're worshiping and praising and blessing God. What a great God we serve. My question to you is, do you know Him? Are you able to magnify our incomparable Lord? Because He wants to hear praise and worship coming from your lips. Father, take the words of these psalms and use them for the glory of Christ. May many people be saved and blessed and born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Magnify our incomparable Lord has been a production of Tony Brew Ministries.